Hello, my name is Robert Sloan, President of Houston Baptist University. Thanks for joining us for another in this series of the secrets that lead us into the ways of wisdom in leading our Christian lives. Uh, these, are, these are mysteries and secrets that are contained in Scripture. They are not intended to be kept hidden, but they are revealed, especially uh, the great mysteries that are now uh, revealed uh, in Christ. Peter said that the, the prophets of old longed to look into these things, things into which angels themselves longed to look. Uh, and the prophets didn't fully understand what they were writing about, but now uh, the secrets are being uh, revealed to us uh, through Christ. So it's incumbent upon us to take advantage uh, of, these, uh, of these mysteries that are now revealed to, to receive the benefit and the blessing of putting these, these bits of insight and practice uh, into our, 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 life, our lifestyles. The mystery that I want us to look at today is really um, a truth that is very, very ancient. It, it starts at the beginning of Scripture, but in many ways is, is a challenge for us to talk about because I think it, uh, it challenges those of us in, in our world who in a world in which we have so much, and we have so much leisure time. It's, it's the importance of work. This gets at the very heart of the, of the opening pages of Scripture, where God creates, God works, He, he, he creates the, the world, uh, and over that six-day period after He sees all that He had made, He declares it was very good. And as part of that creation, making the man and the woman in his image, he places them in charge. He makes them stewards. And thus they become uh, his agents, uh, his forepersons, his, uh, his, again, his stewards to care uh, for all that he has made. And they, they are to have dominion. They have jobs. They have responsibilities. This is what it means to be made in the image of God. Dorothy Sayers wrote a wonderful little essay entitled, Are Women Human? And she was talking about uh, the, the role of women. And she said, well, of course, uh, that it is work that binds uh, humanity together. We, we experience our full humanity and our true humanity in as much as we do the work uh, that we are called to do. I think there's a very important truth here, namely that uh, if we refuse to work, if we refuse to, to uh, discover and use uh, our, our talents and gifts and abilities, if we refuse to accept our obligations uh, before God, then, then we, are, we are failing to live uh, as the humans that He made us to be and certainly as He made us in Christ. One of the most interesting things uh, in the early church is this remarkable record of generosity that you, you find in the early church. The earliest Christians, because of the, uh, of the startling things that had happened with the, the sacrificial death of Jesus and His resurrection from the grave and the outpouring of the Spirit, one of the first movements in the church, one of the first uh, motivations they had as they gathered together was to share together. And of course, this creates various problems, but the impulse was immediately to, to share their, their goods together. They weren't forced to sell their property. They weren't, they weren't, it wasn't a mandate that, every, that no one could have private property, but they did oftentimes take pieces of property. It wasn't necessarily all that they owned, but they took private possessions and they, they monetized those. They would give the proceeds uh, to the leaders of the church and then they cared for one another. In fact, one of the earliest disputes in the church was to how to distribute and take care of um, uh, the widows and orphans, to distribute the, 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 the food and, and the help and the benefit that was needed by those who couldn't care for themselves. The earliest Christians had a remarkable record for generosity. We know that uh, the Romans regarded, uh, in subsequent decades, regarded the Christians as a strange lot, and they were, they were uh, loath to recognize them, but Christians found a way to be recognized. They were recognized as a burial society because Christians in the earliest decades uh, of the church were, were willing to go out and bury those who had been stricken uh, when others would allow the corpses simply to, to lie uh, in garbage heaps or, or perhaps on street corners uh, for too long a time, the earliest Christians took it upon themselves to, to bury 
uh, uh, people, and they were known as burial societies. This, this impulse of generosity, this willingness to give and to serve is part of, of the great mystery of union with Christ. And wherever, of course, uh, you find uh, this willingness to give and you find generosity, you'll also find those, and you find it in the New Testament as well, you find those who take advantage uh, of the generosity. And Paul, for example, when he writes to the Thessalonians, uh, he has to remind them that it's very important to work. It's a given for Paul that we do the work of God in the world, we do the work that we are assigned to do. It's unthinkable that anyone would want to live life without being productive, without caring for family, without being a contributing member to your community uh, and, and to your society. And so uh, he, he, says, he says, for example, to the Thessalonians, now we want you to keep away from every fellow Christian who leads an undisciplined life and not according to the tradition, the example that you got from us because you remember our example when we were there, we didn't act in an undisciplined way. We didn't eat anyone's food without paying for it, but with labor and hardship, we continuously worked night and day so that we would not be a burden to any of you. Paul was a, a leather worker, a, a, a tent maker was probably the most common thing uh, that he made. And uh, he, he did this to, to supply his, his own needs in his apostolic ministries. He typically did not receive monies from the churches where he ministered. Certainly he didn't in Corinth. He never did there because of the circumstances. He did receive money on a regular basis. More than once, he, he says, uh, from the Philippians. They had a partnership from early on in the gospel. They made a commitment to share with him, and they did so. But Paul, as a normal practice... Uh, was a, a leather worker, a tent maker. And he says, uh, we didn't want to be a burden to any of you in Thessalonica, not because we had no right to this. He does insist that the followers of the Lord, the apostles, had a right to sustenance and to be supported by the churches. But he said, we wanted to offer ourselves as an example so that you would follow this, this model. And, and when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, he is not to eat either. For we hear that some among you are leading an undisciplined life, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies. Such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to work in quiet fashion, eat their own food. And then as for you, fellow Christians, do, do not grow weary in doing good. So his, his last warning there is don't allow those who take advantage of your generosity to keep you from being generous. And so it's, uh, it's, a very, it's very important that, uh, as Paul understands it, that we work. Why do we work? One, we are mandated and called to work as God's stewards in the world. Secondly, God is at work in the world and is extending uh, the mission of Jesus into the church so that we are to do God's work in the world of healing, of building, of caring, of extending the frontiers of His kingship through, through artistry, through, through, uh, through music, through business, through, through law, through ministry, through healing, through, through teaching, through educating, through all the ways in which we build culture and build society under the Lordship of Christ. We are called upon to work. And Paul is very in insistent that not only does this make us uh, agents of God, not only does this fulfill our true humanity, but in also when we work, it enables us not only to provide for our own families, but to have enough to be generous. He, he says this quite clearly. He says in 1 Thessalonians, We urge you, fellow Christians, excel still more uh, in your love for others. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. And he means a productive life there. And attend to your own business. Work with your hands just as we commanded you. In Thessalonica, uh, that was uh, mostly what was available uh, to people. Uh, and so he, he encourages this kind of uh, trades work. And why? so that you will behave properly toward outsiders, so that they'll be able to show hospitality to those who come into their midst and not be in any need yourselves. It's a very important thing that we are to work so that we may give to God's work in the world. 2 Corinthians 9, when Paul is taking up an offering, he says, God is able to make all grace abound to you. Paul is wanting to be generous to those who are, who are famine-stricken into poverty uh, in Jerusalem. He's been taking up an offering amongst the churches of Macedonia and, Gal and, um, 
and Achaia. And so he is, he is, he's taking these funds. He says, God can make his grace abound toward you so that always having sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. That's the purpose of God's blessing so that, so that, we, may, so that we may give. And then in 1 Timothy 6, he tells Timothy to instruct those who are wealthy. He says, instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. The importance of work, the importance of work to, to express our humanity, the importance of work uh, to, to be able to, to take care of our families, the importance of work so that we, we may be able to share with those who are not truly able to work, and the importance of work as an act of worship. Paul tells even the slaves in Ephesians and Colossians to do their work as unto the Lord, no matter how menial the task, no matter how harsh or difficult the circumstances. We, we show our devotion to Christ by offering up the fruit of our labors to Christ Himself. Do our work heartily with integrity as unto the Lord. And this is no, some people have cynically said, oh, Paul is just uh, reinforcing the institution of slavery. Nothing could be further from the truth. Paul has encouraged uh, slaves uh, to, to accept their freedom if they can have it. He knows, he, however, he, he does not encourage rebellion because he knows what the horrible hand of the Roman authorities would do uh, to, to a slave. It would, they would, the slave would be, would be brutalized. Uh, and, and a master could brutalize a slave. But Paul tells them to be free if you can, but do your work heartily as unto the Lord. And then he tells the masters, and by the way, that's your brother. You treat him with dignity and respect. And in your relationship, you too must act as unto the Lord. For God will recompense all of us according to what we have done, and he will do so without partiality. In Christ, there is no difference between the, the slave or the master. In Christ, we experience union with Christ and union with one another. In our work, our labor is the way we carry out the mission of God in the world. No matter how small the task, no matter how apparently meaningless it may feel or seem to us or to others, what we do is caught up into the new creation. What we are doing is, is something that is being transformed by the new creation power of God. Do our work as unto the Lord. <music>